Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, and uh, I can start by saying I now something completely different. <laughs> and um, also just just set uh, expectations right. So I'm totally new to this. Uh, certification thing or something. So I heard about uh, Julian and what the work is doing, but I, I hadn't participated yet and so on. And um, to tell a little bit more about me, it's I would basically, after hearing Julian's talk, I would classify myself as a content provider. So it, my job requires me to do a lot of training of HPC users. So I would, yeah, look, it's like some of the input I can provide in the next 10 minutes are coming from a training material content provider uh, view, um, but I can't say much about the certification uh, yet. Um, okay, uh, let's see. How does... Okay, D did it switch now to the second slide? I, I'm still trying to learn here how the uh, uh, screen sharing oh, is didn't. working. Huh? It didn't. It didn't. Okay, so that's. Uh... It didn't come back. So I have the same problem that the, the previous speaker. So I like with uh, two my, uh, PowerPoint uh, windows, and so I, it looks like I, I selected the right one, but. Um... Can you no, move I can't, again? But I can't control. Uh... So let's see. No. Uh, yeah. No. Okay. So just to set the context, uh, my background uh, is mostly on on performance analysis of HPC systems. So this is that skill tree that Julian uh, showed. And so all what I'm knowledge like know about and, and knowledge about is, is basically this uh, what it's this uh, light red uh, uh, cloud here uh, on performance engineering. Uh, what's the background? Where I come from? Who, like whom do I representing? So I'm working at the Jülich Supercomputing Center, which is like a big data center in Germany. Uh, it's it's not attached to a university, but we are attached to a national lab. So we are very much like in 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 the US, it would be like Oak Ridge or uh, Argonne National Lab, and and what we provide is like yeah like uh, yeah computing for people in the lab, but also all over Germany and all over Europe. And inside that uh, computing center, I'm working basically more or less uh, hierarchically under user support. And my team, we call ourselves software analysis and tools team, SWAT team. Uh, it's a little bit ironically, but if we have a vision that uh, some user has a problem and then we jump on our helicopter and we fly there and then we rope down and help the user to get his job done. Um, it's kind of um, uh, different than uh, set up than on other centers because we are not just doing kind of user support and training, but it's, it's a combined uh, service development research and education uh, group. Yeah, so as a service, as I said, we provide performance analysis of HPC applications of the users of our centers and also of something we call POP. I will tell you later about it. Uh, but we also do our own development on, on tools uh, and Perhaps you have heard about them. So we are developing, helping developing Scorpies, Kalaska, and Cube. And then overall, we do uh, not just the practical tool, open source development, but also do research in, in parallel performance analysis method and tools. And as I said, we also do education and training. And one thing I want to uh, point out is it's like I have like 10 people in the team. It's not like two people are doing the service, two people are doing the research, like this PhD student, two people are doing development. But basically everyone in the team is doing all of that. Uh, of course, not all at the same time, but yeah, you work one or two months in development, then you do training, uh, then you have a few weeks of service. So you switch back and forth and, and so, uh, this might be unusual to other people, but actually our researchers and developers like it very much because they can test their ideas basically in, in real life with real users and so on. 
Uh, when it comes to training, um, we do about 15 events uh, per year, uh, training different people, different users, and we do that for the last 15 years. So we have quite some experience in, in, in doing this uh, performance analysis tools and methods training. And on one hand, it's basically uh, tutorials at conferences like SC, ISC, and so on, half and full day, the usual stuff. Then we have the usual, yeah, like introduction to our systems, uh, how to use the tools at our center, one to three day tool trainings. And then we have something special, uh, which I think it's, it's very interesting, and but also highlights some of uh, the, the issues with training in that area. It's, what we call uh, tuning workshops in the contents of VIHPS. And VIHPS is uh, also like a kind of an international, very loose uh, collaboration of people. It's called Virtual Institute High Productivity Supercomputing. And you can think about it, it's basically uh, all the tool developers uh, in the Western world, uh, Europe and US, who are working on uh, developing HPC tools kind of organize themselves in this uh, virtual institute. We, we got some starting funding by some German organization in the beginning, but basically since 2011, we basically run it out of our own resources it's, as it's very loosely coupled. I guess it's probably like HPC certification forum. And so it's basically to coordinate uh, again the with development integration of performance tools, but also doing workshops on that area and, and, and training uh, workshops. And uh, this is just the process, uh, it's all the tools involved. Uh, I don't wanna go in details here. Uh, I wanna go more on that one. So as I said, we, we do this uh, tutorials at, at, at various conferences. I listed here what uh, tutorials we had and how many, but then we have this tuning workshop series. So tuning workshop series is typically free, but mostly five days. Um, people come to the site, we're doing on-site training. So we give an overview about the different tools which are available to, to, to analyze and optimize your program. We explain the functionality behind the tools and how to use them uh, effectively. Uh, but we learn if you just basically uh, tell that the people you do a presentation like I do now, or you do it at a, a, a conference, um, people very quickly will forget most of the stuff because um, you don't need the performance tools uh, stuff all the time. I mean, normally you do some development when perhaps for half a year you don't need them anymore until you realize uh, the program is not effectively, and when you need it again, and then you forgot most of it. So uh, one thing is very important is because the tools are, like very special, they are not often used. So even the, the tutorials, the one day tutorials have to have some hands on experience. So people do do it themselves, they, they try a little example and so on. Otherwise they get forget very quickly uh, what they have learned and, and, and the, the whole training was useless. Um, but we actually take it a, a step further is that we do it on five days. And I would say then half of a day we do like the normal presentation, uh, small hands-on examples, but the other half, so typically in the afternoon of these five days, people are told to actually now use their own code, so the, the thing they are developing, and then try to apply the tools they just learned on their own codes. And, and then, of course, it will not work because, yeah, you know, like uh, it's not so well prepared as, as the prepared examples and so on. But now the, we as uh, trainers are there, we can help them through the, the first hurdles, uh, they typically the, the, the typical uh, errors they always do. And so we can bring them over. And so the, the success is that with a little luck in these five days, they have their own first success story. So they, they optimize something in their program. So they, they not only learned the tool, but they actually got something out of it. And this, uh, in our mind, is, is, is ex extremely important. Uh, this is just to show, like we do that for since 2008, uh, two to three times a year. It's all spread all over the, uh, Europe, but we also did some two in Japan, uh, one in Chile, and, and two in US. So what is uh, uh, the lesson learned, and which is what I, what I bring in here for discussion, which 
yeah, not barely fits your your the, the topic, but uh, it has some aspects about uh, training and training HPC stuff to people. Yeah, so it might be that uh, in other cases like Slurm or using the Unix tools is not that uh, uh, complicated, but with with spe special tools like performance tools, debuggers, or things you don't use all the time. Um, uh, it's a little bit more complicated, yeah. And everyone who has used performance tools uh, of themselves, uh, you know, yeah. If they are a little bit more than like two buttons or something, they are not easy to use and intuitive. Never trust a tool developer who tells you it's an easy to use tool. It's it's not true, or the tool is useless. So, what what after these 10, 20 years working on these tools, uh, yeah, what we got to is that we. It's typically with some, yeah, you, you, yeah, you, you, you went to a training, it's relatively easy yeah, to, to collect and display performance data. And this is what people show in their tutorials and on the screen. Yeah, like, here, collect the data, this is how presented, and ah, tool is, 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 is greatly working. But what they don't tell you or what drives a lot of uh, uh, experience is, now we have all these diagrams and graphs and, and data, and what to what to draw out of it? Yeah, what does it mean for my program? What what parts of my program are wrong? How badly? On what do I have to change? And this is that part is to be not shown in tutorial. This is left to the user. And so when people try it on their own, they like they go to a tutorial, go home, they try it. Uh, they said, hmm, yeah, it's it's close to useless or, or not. So uh, in the end, yeah, they, they stop using these tools and, and, and do their own little stuff like debugging, they use for printf debugging or for performance, uh, we just measure some timers and, and that's it. The second part of it is the, uh, what other people talked about too is like uh, Julian mentioned that with Slurm on different sites, yeah, like basically every cluster out there uh, even if it's it's a Linux cluster and it uses Slurm and, and it has the two libraries, but they are slight differences. Yeah, like the hardware is slightly different, the software is slightly different, has different versions, the build systems uh, the people are used are different. So even if you learn something on one side, just you go to on your, to, to the next side, they use different uh, compilers, a different MPI or OpenMP, which has a different version, which supports more or less features, and suddenly the whole thing uh, looks differently. Or the typical thing, what uh, performance tool people tell you, oh yeah, you just change a few things in a make file, and then you recompile the application to collect the data. Yeah, so okay, what happens if someone uses CMake, or even some home, yeah, not, not using make files, and then they are stuck already. So this is why everything, um, it's nice to have these tutorials online or at, at, at conferences, but in my experience for things like performance tools and, and any, anything which is used not day to day, yeah, so um, unless you have a way for the people to, to basically to, to, to get them through the first steps, yeah, like having a, a, a training which allows them to apply it on their own stuff and having an expert watching over it and helping them, um, it greatly diminishes uh, the, the usefulness of that training. So meanwhile, I, I personally even strongly believe that, uh, you know, like if you go to a, a, a tutorial at a conference, a half day, a full day and, and about tools, it gives you some ideas, but you will not learn it really to help uh, you uh, analyzing your, your own uh, program. So that's the, the one thing I want to bring to the discussion. The second thing, which is a little bit more related, is I'm also working in a, in a center of excellence called POP. It's Performance Optimization and Productivity. This is a, a European center of excellence. It's like a, a funded program which brings together uh, various people. Um, and again, here it's performance tool people. And what the, this uh, center provides is that basically, if you have a, a performance problem, people can come to us. They go to our website at popzoe.eu uh, uh, and they say, oh, tell me uh, how bad my, my application is doing and, and they can ask for what we call a performance assessment and then we would get access to the code, do the measurement and give them a report what's going wrong. Uh, the context of that is we have different people, different backgrounds and using different tools doing that. So we had to come up with uh, 
in, in a, a strategy how to assess the performance of a code, which is kind of not tied to specific tools and specific things. And um, so I, again, I don't want to go into details here, but uh, so independent of a, a, a user who wants to get that service, independent which specific expert at which center actually does that, he always gets the same kind of report. So in order to do that, I said we had to come up with this methodology, here's some details if people are interested in it, but I, it's, I don't want to uh, discuss it here, it's just for, if you're interested you can look at the slides, but what I want to bring in here again is, yeah, so uh, we had to do not a, a, a user training, but we had to do a performance analyst training, or, or like if you want to like a user support, person training. Again, we have to also use how to efficiently use the tools in a project, but also about these metrics and methodology so they can give the same kind of service independent whom you get the service from. This is currently only project internal only. So like when we get new uh, members in, in the project, we, we train them and also we uh, retrain our uh, current members so we have advanced topics. But in the future, we think about uh, that we provide that also to the outside of a project. And so we also talked about having like a certified POP and a performance analyst. So this is uh, kind of another aspect I can bring into the discussion and so on. So I hope it was not like totally uh, uh, uninteresting for you. Uh, I, I tried to warn you in the beginning. Uh, said I, I'm new to this certification thing. Uh, I think it's very interesting. Uh, as I said, I, I coming more from the content providing side, um, uh, have some insights and lessons I, I know from performance tools training and I hope it's useful to some people. Thank you. Great. So, so you got a question um, from Brian here. Is it limited to EU members to take advant advantage of it or brace partners and so on? Yeah, so the, the service, anyone in the European Union can request it. So we get funded by European Union. So of course, they don't want to pay us money that we do like performance tuning for an American or Chinese code or something. But I mean, it has basically, if you are in an international collaboration, you just need someone in Europe who basically can represent you and your code and then talk to us. But yeah. And when I say free, it means, of course, it doesn't cost money, but of course, uh, it will cost you time. Yeah? You have to tell us how the code is working, how to compile it, give a test code. So uh, it's not free in, in term of time, but free in times of, of money. Thank you. And as I'd like, write to me uh, uh, if you want to get more specific uh, details on that. David, did you have not a question? Yeah, at least for HPC certification, I can say we truly try to make everyone able to participate. Um, but this is the reason because we haven't, we are not funded. Yeah. And, and, and the, the thing with the EU is, is only, is only basically, uh, is about the pop, uh, um, the pop services. Uh, when we talk about this VIHPS training, of course, this is open to everyone. I mean, like when, as I said, we did it also in the US and Japan or something. And, and even if the training is happening at the site, it's typically open to outside users as well. Here you got another question from David. Scope, what is the scope of operation that can be formed for bioinformatics work and also how about access for non -E Um In, so the, the performance analytics work is uh, from, I guess it refers to POP. Um, so it's, it's not res uh, um, restricted to a specific area it's more restricted that it's uh, a parallel program. So we are not optimizing uh, sequential codes. We are not parallelizing that. This is also some sort of optimization, but uh, we are constant, but, but we don't have a skill set for that because this, this is very application specific. So we are concentrating on, you have a parallel code, it doesn't behave as well and works. 
So if you have a code in bioinformatics, which is like a power code, MPI or something like this, or OpenMP, it's fine. If you have more like workflows with scripts or something, um, this is not so much our domain. <laughs> All right, I have a question to you, Ben. So when, when you mentioned how easy it is, right, relatively easy to use the tools, uh, but how hard it is to draw the right conclusion, I was immediately thinking about maybe there is some specific set of skills needed to draw those conclusions. And then you presented in POP that you found this nice methodology to basically automatize this process. Do you think it's now solved or is there still kind of this need of knowledge of systems and, and applications that goes beyond it? Um, it's, it gets, um, I said, I'm working in this tools for 20 years. And what I learned is over time, I think we made it easier and easier to get more and more data and present them in a way that it's easy for you to draw conclusions. But it's still, um, complicated because as I said, every application is different. Yeah, so um, I think we can even be getting better now even to say this is the source of a problem and so on. But um, I mean, the real exercise is not to find out uh, how bad your code is working and what's wrong about it, but how to fix it. And that part, it basically no tool can cover and no training can cover because it's so application specific. So, yeah, I mean, it can mean use a different library, use a different algorithm and so on. But because as a, even if I'm, 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 I'm working on performance on a, on a HPC for a long time, I, I not, I'm not an expert on whatever, bioinformatics, quantum physics or so on, where I would need that. So it, it's, you need to get the right people together yeah, to help here. Not okay. sure. That but, was great. Uh, oh, that was great, Ben. Thank you. Um, yeah. And so what I what I what I try to is that I'm new to that. So I think both the HPS and Pop, we probably have some knowledge which can help you getting the skill tree for performance engineering is fleshed out and, and more things and, and put more stuff in. I, I'm not promising anything. I, I can't re I can talk for all these people. It's it's like they're both larger organizations. But I just say um, it's certainly this is the, the, the close match point for these kind of things. 